Most people who use a collectible bamboo fly rod also want to use a vintage reel. Why? Well, because the vintage reel goes hand in hand with the vintage rod. It's a link to the past, to the roots of fly fishing. There are a ton of usable, collectible vintage fly reels on the market today, mainly because reels hold up better than rods do. There are definite fan favorites, and because this is my video, these are what I feel are among the most popular. Probably the most important and collectible worldwide is the House of Hardy, a British company that was known as the Rolls Royce of fly fishing. Hardy began production of reels in the last quarter of the 19th century and still makes some of its reels in England today. A few of their reels have fetched $20,000 or more, but we are going to concentrate on usable and not just collectible. Their most popular all-around reel is the Model Perfect, this series right here, their first production reel. And it came in many sizes. What I have here are two very popular sizes, the 3 and 3 8 inches that was made in the 1950s and a 3 and an 8 inch that was made in the latter half of the 1950s. Note that the 3 and 3 8 this model right here, also comes in the original box and comes with the original packing material. This adds significant value to the price of the reel. Furthermore, it is in the top grade of EX, EX Plus and was never used. An added bonus is this unbroken agate line guide, which in many reels over the years usually developed hairline cracks because it is real stone. If you wanted to save money, you could have purchased this reel with a metal line guard or even no line guide at all. The line guide took the pressure off the retrieval and added to the smoothness of the cast. The original finish of these reels came blued, like how gun barrels are finished today, as in the Hardy Unico reel here, another popular model. But by the middle of the 20th century, a less expensive method was employed, painting, as these two reels show. One downside of painting is that the finish scratches easier, as you can see with this 3 and 1 8 reel. As with fly rods, the smaller the better, and better because the balance with the shorter rods is most important. Over the past decade or so, the Hardy Lightweight series has been gaining in popularity because it is lighter and even more in balance with the really lighter weight bamboo rods. From the Lightweight series are these two popular models, the Featherweight and the even smaller Flyweight. Both are very desirable and were still made in England up until early 2008, like these two. If Hardy produced the Rolls-Royce of reels, the Enterprise Manufacturing Company, an American company begun in the late 19th century, produced the workhorse of fly reels, the Fluger Metalis. These quality, well-built, inexpensive fly reels were known as the working man's reel. Metalis were produced in the U.S. until the early 1970s. You can see some of the changes in the reels by looking at this 1492, their smallest reel that came with these sculpted metal pillars that you don't find in later models. Among the most popular sizes are these 1492 and 1494 and half models. While the prices for the reels change because of size, scarcity, and condition, the Hardy Perfects and the Hardy Lightweights are generally priced higher than Fluger Metalists and are usually paired with the more expensive bamboo rods. The 3 and 3 8 in the box is in such good condition, it's worth about $600. While the three and an eighth is a more desirable size, but the lower condition and lack of box puts it around $350. These three Flugers sell in their $35 range to the $60 range. This is just a brief look at the world of collectible fly fishing reels. I hope you have gained a little knowledge that will help you in plunging into my world and not getting taken to the cleaners.